Hi everyone, welcome back to another video in the Web Security Academy series. In today's video, we'll be covering lab number two in the command injection module titled Blind OS Command Injection with Time Delays. All right, let's get started. This lab contains a blind OS command injection vulnerability in the feedback function. The application executes a shell command containing the user supplied details. The output from the command is not returned in the response, so we can't use the same technique that we used in the previous lab because the raw output of the command is not displayed to us in the response, and so we're going to have to use a different technique. To solve the lab, exploit the blind OS command injection vulnerability to cause a 10 second delay. All right, so because it's a blind command injection, the way we're going to prove that we do have a command injection vulnerability is by making the application wait for 10 seconds before it gives us a response. So the target goal over here is to exploit the blind command injection in the feedback function. All right, let's access the lab. And while we do that, let's open up Burp Community Edition. Hit OK. Hit next, start burp. And let's close this over here and put it right over here. Okay, set foxy proxy to intercept requests in burp. And let's click on the submit feedback page and it gets intercepted in burp. Turn intercept to off and go to HTTP history. Okay, let's submit a feedback form. So let's say test, test at test.ca, and then subject is also test, and the message is test. Hit submit feedback. And you'll notice over here that the response from the feedback form is just thank you for submitting the feedback. So it doesn't actually give you the response of the request that you performed. Instead, it just gives you a generic response. And so if any of these fields is vulnerable to command injection, it's not going to be an in-band command injection. It's going to be a blind command injection. So let's look at the post request that is getting performed and send it to repeater. Okay, so notice over here, we've got a CSRF parameter, and then we've got the parameters that we saw on the page, which is name, email, subject, and message. Now, I don't know yet which field is vulnerable to command injection, and so I'm just gonna start with the first one, which is the name field, and see if it's vulnerable. And the way we're gonna do that is we're going to use uh, the sleep command. So if you've never seen the sleep command over here, it essentially just tells the command line, sleep for a certain amount of time and then run the command. So let's say over here, if I say sleep 10, it'll sleep for 10 seconds. And then when the 10 seconds are, are up, it'll execute the command. Okay, so it outputted the command. So over here, if you just say sleep one, it'll output it automatically. So that's what essentially we're going to do in order to find if it's vulnerable to command injection. So we'll start off with the name field over here. So we're just gonna say and sleep 10, and we're gonna use the hash sign. So the and sign is just to concatenate two commands together. And then the hash sign over here is just to comment out uh, the rest of the command so that we don't run into any errors. So let's highlight this and then control U to URL encode it, hit send. And notice that we get the request almost right away, which means that the name field is not vulnerable to command injection. So let's remove this right over here and move on to the email field. So again, let's say and sleep 10 and then comment out the rest of the command. Let's control U to URL encode it, hit send. And if it takes 10 seconds, so it's already taking an unusually long time, which means that I'm sure that this parameter over here, the email field is definitely vulnerable to command injection. And here we go. So we get our output almost 10 seconds later. So a little over 10 seconds later. And you could see over here, it says, congratulations, you solved the lab. So you were able to prove over here that the email field is vulnerable to a blind command injection vulnerability. Now in the next lab, we'll see how we could use that in order to exfiltrate data from the system. Uh, but for now, the next thing that we're going to do is script the exploit. 
If you would like to see a detailed version of the video where we first exploit the vulnerability manually and then script it in Python, check out the video linked on the screen. Also make sure to hit the subscribe button and check out my course if you're interested in seeing more videos like this one. Thank you and see you in the next video.